Welcome to Hokey Religion, the Star Wars podcast. This episode, we're going to talk about the Mandalorian and other Star Wars things. This is Tyler. This is Michael. Welcome to episode 105. Wow. Too many. <laughs> Every time. I always think, wow, that's that's a big number. That's <laughs> way bigger than it should be. So as of recording, Disney Plus came out this morning and it didn't work for most of the day until it finally worked well enough for us to watch The Mandalorian. <laughs> until it finally worked well enough for your power to go out yep. <laughs> for an hour. We're like, all right, let's 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 just wait. Let's stay off the internet all day and not get spoiled on anything that happened. And let's watch it tonight, right before we record. And an hour before we start recording, before we're, we're ready to start watching the show, your power goes I out. I lose power. The and whole it's neighborhood. out for like an hour, and an hour and a half, two hours. Yeah. It finally came back with enough time for us to watch it, and now <laughs> we're recording an episode. Oh. It, was, it was real touch and go there, but we've, we've done it. <laughs> we've caught up to the rest of the world now. We did it. And wow. It was all right. <laughs> Just kidding. It was fantastic. It was so good. It was exactly what I wanted. Okay, so right off the bat, I, I like how it wasn't it wasn't over the top. It no. wasn't like it wasn't like they had to shove as much into the first episode as they could. It was right. it was just enough, just right. It was very kind of muted almost. Well, it's so for anyone that hasn't watched The Mandalorian, we're going to fully talk about it now, so leave now or you know, don't. Um, but yeah, it's 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 that weird thing of it's not most Star Wars TV shows that we've had have an episode arc. Like even though, even though resistance has an overall story arc, each episode has a little, oh, min, has a little min, our arc for the episode. Right. Right. Like, oh, it, we got to, it's find, more, we got to find the, it's the, more kids programming yeah. type shows. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, even rebels, each episode had a thing that needed to happen in that episode even though there's a larger story going on. Yeah. There's Whereas the A this, story and the B story. And you right, wrap there's up the always B a, story. There's always a crappy B story with the A story you get hints and pieces, like, you know, bits and pieces of. Right. Um, but this was... It's, this is all A, baby. Yeah, I mean, the only thing like this we've had... Disney are, Plus, more like A plus. <laughs> get Bob on the phone. <laughs> Bob! <laughs> <laughs> Real quick, quick. No, no, no. I know you're eating dinner, but please. <laughs> Um, but so the only other life's action stuff we've had are films and, you know, that's just nonstop having to cram in everything in, in you know, two hours. Yeah. But you have a full hour of, you have a full what, 10 hours of story that we're going to be able to tell and just, you don't have to cram a bunch of stuff in. You're able yeah. to let it simmer. And you don't have to cram it. No, you don't have to cram it. You don't cram your simmer. <laughs> how does that work do you cram your simmers it's just it, it was yeah it was nice and the pacing was really good yeah. and the music was fantastic yeah. and it's introducing it looks us incredible oh introducing us to a new world and new creatures and new things and it's not just like here's a thing and here's a thing and now back to the story and yeah. oh the movie's over <laughs> right I explosion like, explosion explosion the end i like too how rogue one suffered a, a, a little bit from this in the beginning of the movie or the first half or it was just like location, 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 you right. know, and, and, and oh, it's, it's this and keep track of that. And now we're here. And uh, like, this was, it would, I mean, you, you, we, we switched a couple times in the beginning, but there weren't like, you don't know where you are or the, or yeah, the context like, or uh, unlike or Rogue One, like Rogue One is the only movie I can think of. The only star Wars movie, right. Where they, they like, it Solo had it too. Solo had it too. Where like the the planet's names pop up. Yeah. When they get to a planet or whatever, and right. there's like a oh, that's that place. Yeah. Feeling you know of of them going somewhere. Right. Oh, that's here, here it's like he no. goes to like three different planets. There's a snow planet. No idea what they are. Right. Snow planet in the beginning. Then the second planet we'll talk about in a minute, and then a desert planet. Right. 
and uh, you don't. And I, yeah, we'll get I, into I, it. But I have no idea what they are. I don't think it was ever referenced. Right. And I'm sure it's somewhere or going to be in some sort of guidebook that will come out. Yeah. I don't um, think we missed any references to the names of the places. I don't think we did. I was looking for that stuff, but no. But, but yeah, like so, it, the, there weren't. There wasn't any obvious indication about where we were or who the people were necessarily that that he was talking to and um yeah but i i like that again back to the muted thing it's just kind of like very just it is what it is and you we're just kind of dropped in the middle of his life here right you know very uh not i don't know it it's like the stakes aren't really high <laughs> you which know is, which is great yeah well i like that they're going to be now, now that we've seen what's well, happening yeah, at right, the end of get, the episode, let's get into it. Um, First of all, it's rated PG, which it is surprised rated me. PG. I thought it would be PG thirteen. Like, yeah, that the surprised films have me. Been, which uh, I wonder. I don't know. It still had the door scene. It was still in violent. The trailer that was in the trailer. Yeah, it was still violent. Obviously, all the shooting, but there's no like visual dismemberment. Sure. They there was the there's no cussing. <laughs> no, is there? Yeah, no. I guess I guess there wasn't any. I wonder how that works. But like, yeah, there was the dismemberment scene of the guy getting, you know, chopped in the door, but it was, all you saw were, was like a footfall. Like it wasn't, you didn't see the actual dismemberment or the yeah. the slicing right. parts. Um, so I guess that is okay. <laughs> I guess uh, the sound of, of dismemberment is PG. That's fine. Yeah. We can hear dismemberment. <laughs> Just can't see it. The, uh, the, the children, wet- the children can hear dismemberment <laughs> and death. As long the, as you don't show it. The wet flops. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. All right. So do you want to just go through the episode? How do you want to do it? We'll just go through it. Sure. I'll go through my notes. You've got notes. I didn't take notes because I was just <laughs> watching. So I opened up with him on this snowy planet. I don't know. I don't know if it was Crownist from Rebels. Do you remember that? I don't know if you ever watched that far. I watched a little bit of that. The whole Mandalorian storyline with Sabine. Like where she like goes back oh, to yeah. like some clan and who who cares? <laughs> a lot of stuff happens there, but there was a snowy planet that some clan was on. Okay, I don't know. That's a it's a really thin line I'm drawing there. Uh, but yeah, it opens up on the snowy planet, and uh, he uh finds his bounty, who is Horatio Sands, <laughs> which yeah, is pretty funny. That was really good. Uh, I didn't look that up to confirm that, but man, that really pretty, sounded and looked like and behaved like is. Horatio Sands. I'm pretty sure it was. Uh, Mithril. Yeah. I don't know if that was the species or the, the guy's name, but I'll look it up. Um, he finds his bounty, takes it back to uh, uh, Long Snoot character. I don't know, not uh, the not the Long Snoot from New Hope. I don't think. Uh, yeah, I would assume not, but. Some kind of um uh what are they called? Kubaz? Yeah. Um, alien. And he plays a little flute and Brian Persane pulls up <laughs> in a land speeder. So it's like a little flute Uber, <laughs> like you're saying. Yeah. yeah. A, little a little fluber. Sp- space Uber, like space taxi station. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Called by flute. Which is pretty good. Yeah. So Brian Persane is a uh It was a, a land speeder. Was it? Okay. Yeah, it was. yeah, it had to have been. I mean, uh, he's already in the uh, Disney fold with DuckTales. That's true. Yeah, so Brian Pesain is a Star Wars Uber driver, which is pretty great. <laughs> was. <laughs> was a Star Wars oh, Uber yeah, driver. Oh, yeah, right. He got, he got, ate he by got a, eaten by, a, a, by gra- a ice graboid. graboid. <laughs> yeah, there was definitely a graboid from, from Tremors. Yeah. Yeah, so he loads up Horatio Sands, and there's a gr- whole graboid battle, which is pretty great. Right. Uh, and that rifle from the holiday special yeah. with the with the electric prongs at the end that yeah, was pretty great it's just a, a prod so there was that basically. his rifle obviously and then the mithril guy mentioned life day he was yeah he was going somewhere for life day so it's like two holiday special references in in less than two minutes yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is pretty great um yeah and then that guy ends up he gets frozen yeah yeah, the the um, it's got a little portable. The Razor Crest has a, a has a, a carbon po- freezing chamber on yeah, it. Yeah, a little portable chamber on it. That was pretty great. 
<clears throat> no Ugnots required. And he had, uh, what, four or five bounties? Yeah, at already that just point? stacked up sitting yeah. there. So he had just he's just been going around collecting people and freezing them and yeah and then just turns them all into Carl Weathers <laughs> yeah he doesn't literally turn them into Carl Weathers he <laughs> gives them, he gives <laughs> that them to Carl would be Weathers. much better than a carbonite chamber <laughs> turn me into Carl Weathers do it <laughs> <laughs> they're all looking forward to it um so yeah they get dropped off with Carl Weathers on this second planet um other place yeah. Other place number two, which is pretty, that cantina scene was pretty good. There was a a glancing shot of what looked like Zuvio. Constable it was Zuvio. definitely Zuvio's helmet. Like it was hat. green. It was definitely green. It was most certainly his hat reused for this scene. I hope that's actually him because that would be the greatest yeah cut character to to pull. <laughs> I can't think of another because that was. I mean, that was a desert place. Ish, it was more Ish, it was rocky, yeah, rocky. some kind of weird rocky desert place. I don't know. And which, by the way, all those scenes that we that we saw leaked really early on, it yeah. seemed like that was, was that that, like that, that city. Yeah, because I'm assuming that's going to be a main location, especially because of the Mandalorian uh, under yeah. You know, so armor. so yeah, he drops his bounties off and then goes to um, what looks like an underground. Mandalorian well, he clan gets, well, or he collective. Gets, well, he goes to uh, Werner Herzog. Oh, uh, you're right. First right, 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 to right. get the Beskar, um, and Werner Herzog's character is just re- just called the client. Okay, yeah. He doesn't have, he doesn't a, name have a name yet. Name. Uh, right. Even in IMDb, he's just called the client. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, so Werner yeah. Werner Herzog's character, the client, tells him about this job where he can only give the last four digits of the tracking code, which apparently represents age. Yeah. Which is 50 uh, years old. 50 years old, according to him. Um, and the last location of the target. Right. This is a, apparently a very sensitive target. Um, he pays him up front with a, a slab of Beskar. Yeah. Which is the only reason he took the job, I assume. Um, and then after that, yeah, he goes to some kind of underground. So I want to talk about this part, right? So he is this ex-Imperial guy. He has like this Imperial crest metal hanging on his chest like he won some kind of 5k <laughs> um and he has a you know a cape on and i love how all, all the stormtroopers in that room their armor is just like shit because they yeah. can't get fresh armor they can't get clean right. armor like once it's what they have you know, is once what it's they screwed have. up that's that's it and even one of the guys in the corner looked like his armor was a little too big <laughs> to me Maybe. um but like they are all just they have nothing else right yeah. they're just with this guy right but what was interesting about this scene is there's this client but then this doctor guy yeah. comes out and the doctor's feeding all the information about why why we need him well, you know why we're going after this guy and this this doctor guy who's not the imperial right is giving seems, a lot of extra information he seems to be the one interested in the target the most but they want the target dead Yes. Even though this guy's a doctor guy True. and he's very interested in the target and he's providing a lot of information about the target, he wants him dead. Yeah. So that's where I, and that whole, that whole time I was like, who is, who's the real. Dr. Perishing? Dr. Per- Perishing. Dr. Perishing. Perishing. Okay. Oh, yeah. P-E-R-S-H-I-N-G. Perishing. Yeah. yeah. So this doctor guy seems to have most of the information. Yeah. But the. Imperial guy is, I guess, paying for the job. So, like, who is the real person? All right, we don't have to go. We don't have to go job. linear here. So, the no. very end of the episode. <laughs> sure. The huge spoiler. I mean, the big this reveal, is this the is a big giant spoiler. Deal is that there's this baby creature who's fifty years old, but it's yeah. definitely a baby Yoda species character. Yes, it's a baby Yoda, not Yoda, literally, and or Yaddle. I mean, you know, we don't want to single out Yoda. <laughs> Poor Yaddle gets no respect. It's the orange hair. Yeah. <laughs> the redheaded stepchild of Yoda people. Literally. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, this, it's, it's a, this tiny baby Yoda thing. Yoda species. Which is, I mean, for anyone that's just like, I like Star Wars and doesn't know anything about the Star Wars, right? We don't know what a Yoda is. So According people who to just, everyone that, who doesn't know Star Wars that I've talked to about this show, they think the Mandalorian is Boba Fett. So, yeah, I assume they're going to think this well, is Yoda. I mean, so it's just, you know, people who are just watching this because they like Star Wars things, and that's totally fine. 
you know, for the uninitiated, right? We know Yoda. We don't know what a Yoda is. Right. We don't have a species or a home world or anything Any other kind than of background. Yoda is a Yoda is one of them. And, and Yaddle, it lives a very long time. And Yaddle is one of them. Yeah. When Luke met Yoda on Dagobah, he was 900 years old. He mm-hmm. says that. Yeah. Um and the the Yoda species was always extremely off limits. Mm-hmm. Like that was like George was very clear about that being off limits for pretty much anyone. Yeah. Um, so the fact that there is a Yoda thing in this show is a big deal yeah. because they don't exist other than two that we've known of, which were both only introduced in things created by George Lucas. Yeah. Um, and even then we have so little information about them. Yaddle was just a scene really mm-hmm. not involved in anything. And Yoda and was, obviously was it attacking Yoda, the clones. I believe so on the council. Yeah. <clears throat> Something like that. So the fact that there's some Maybe kind of in Yoda Phantom menace, it might have, she might the fact there is a, Yoda species creature, yeah, is a big freaking deal. Yeah, and obviously they're still babies at fifty, which is also interesting. So yeah, so there was this doctor who wanted, who had all this extra information. They wanted the target dead. Yeah, they were saying not alive. They were, but they still want the target. Want the body? Yeah, and it's a doctor. So what are they doing with these creatures? What are they doing with these Yoda things? I hate I hate calling them Yodas because that, that yeah, to me that sounds like my grandma talking about the Facebook. Yeah, I know. Like, <laughs> what do they want with these Yodas? What are they called? I hate not being able to reference it as a something else that's not that's not a Yoda. It's like calling any action figure a GI Joe. Yeah, right. <laughs> like you know that's something your grandpa does. He's like, you got Star Wars figures, yeah. and he's like, what are you doing with them GI Joes, <laughs> grandpa? Grandpa, they're action figures. This is a uh, Yoda. No, it's not. I, I, yeah, I don't quit playing with those dolls or rub my feet. <laughs> <laughs> That's what grandpas say. Sure, sure. That's normal. <laughs> Definitely normal. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we have to come up with a name for this thing. Take that I, dress I refuse off. to keep calling it. <laughs> <laughs> I refuse to keep calling it a Yoda. We have to. We have to give it a name. Right now. What do we have to? It has to have a name. Oh, my brain's too frazzled for this. McClunky. <laughs> His name is McClunky. Okay. We'll, we'll we'll explain that later yeah. if you if you don't know what that means. <laughs> yeah, that's that. Okay. Okay. The McClunkies. So, yeah. So so this little McClunky, <laughs> this little green pointy eared McClunky is super cute and reaches out the uh, you know to to touch. Uh, the Mandalorian's finger. Uh-huh. But the doctor wants this thing dead, but they want it brought in dead. Yeah. It can't be dangerous because it's a baby still. Well, who knows? I assume. At yeah, this point, knows? it might not be dangerous. But... Um, and the Mandalorian, I mean, there, there's a lot you can assume there, but he obviously did not want to kill it. No, and I think the, big, the, the thing there is, right, and that was, I think there was some foreshadowing to that, the Mandalorian himself was a what they referred to as a foundling. Yeah. Which you you see in flashbacks, it looks like his parents were killed or he was left without his parents. Assuming, right. And the, the, assuming they were dead. The armorer um in the in the Mandalorian collective underground thing uh mentioned that or he mentioned in in a conversation with the armorer that he was in the middle of the Great Purge. Yeah, the Great Purge, which we believe is a reference to Order sixty six when they purged the Jedi and the, and the Empire took kind over of, yeah, Mandalore. When the Empire basically just took over everything. Yeah. Um, kind of affected all worlds. And Mandalore was a very specific planet they were always interested in. Yeah. Anyways, probably because of the Beskar, too. Yeah. Um, I would because, imagine. Because that metal has... Um, had the Imperial insignia on it. Yeah. Yeah. And that metal is is uh, slightly effective against lightsabers, too. It can take glancing blows from lightsabers and not get destroyed. Yeah. It's, it's superior to all... <laughs> It's like Star Wars vibranium, basic kind of. Yeah, basically. Um, So it's a very important metal, and especially with the Empire death, you know, death machine um, that they were, you know, building everything uh, to kill everything. I'm assuming Beskar was probably pretty important. Yeah. So I'm assuming, and they mentioned like the Beskar being brought back to the clan. Yeah. So uh, kind of like reclaiming a piece of what's theirs. So during the Great Purge, I guess his parents during the purge, his parents died, and he was a foundling, I'm guessing, which is just a, like, youngling. He was a, he was a... Um, a young Mandalorian. He was, you know, just with, uh, he was, what is the term I am looking for? What is a person without Orphans? parents? Orphans? That's the word? <laughs> Thank you. 
Jeez. He was uh, he, one of them Oliver Twists. <laughs> All right, Grandpa, go back to whatever you were doing. Uh, he's one of them Newsies. All right, just, Grandpa, please. So he was an orphan. He was a space orphan, I guess, is a foundling. Right? Is that just the word we're going to use for orphan for space well, now? Well, see, I don't, I don't know. I think, or is it a foundling in reference to a Mandalore person being found? That's what I think. I think, yeah, yeah, I think there's a specific term for a young, young abandoned Mandalorians, maybe. Yeah. So, so, anyways, the foreshadowing of him being alone as a child and being a foundling, he comes across this fifty-year-old baby, McClunky. <laughs> And, and I, I'm assuming he has a 50 year old baby McClunky. Yeah. Okay. A 50 year old baby. McClunky. It's not named McClunky. It is a McClunky. I, I'm not clear yet. So whether referring to the race or this specific baby, we'll just in general use the term McClunky for now. <laughs> okay. Just to make it easy. So, all right. So this McClunky 50 years old, whatever. So this doctor wants it. The doctor is the one that just seems interested in it more than anyone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and so that, yeah, that so whole he, scene, I was like, wait, wait, why, why is all of this happening? Yeah. And then once we found out that it's a McClunky, mm-hmm. that raises even more questions as to why is this happening? Because right. the only other McClunkies we've ever seen have both been very important Jedi. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's Like true. very, very important Jedi, like council. Council Jedi. members. Not to mention they live for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Yeah. So... If if there are other and McClunkies honestly, this involved, could, this could be setting up. I wonder if, well, I, I mean, we don't know the fate of this McClunky. No, right. But um, if it lives, what does that mean for for like Last Jedi era time? Right. You know, it yeah. would be a teenager basically. So first that off, time. I looked at the internet right after, and everyone's like, "Is it Yoda's clone?" Because people, Yoda's clone, guys. <laughs> Jesus. Everyone doesn't have to be the same person. <laughs> We've been over this every time. Why does everyone have to be the same person? Aye, aye. And they're like, aye. not to mention, I saw some that were saying, could Yoda have had a child? Again, not has everyone to be, has to be it a has parent. has to be a Yoda McClunky. <laughs> right. It has to be a direct Yoda descendant. Okay. There was only one, and it was Yoda. <laughs> Ugh. Anyways, <clears throat> so... There were rumors a while back that that George Lucas was being brought in to flesh out some stuff with the McClunkies mm-hmm. about so stuff about Yoda and Yoda's background, and I'm wondering if it was in direct reference to this. Maybe, um, I did see something specifically for a property, like something that was going to be just, made. I think just for Star Wars in general, there wasn't like a brought in as a consultant. There wasn't a thing. there was there wasn't a specific thing referenced as to why yeah just that he was being brought in to help flesh out okay the the yoda species it had to have been then right and then i saw um some stuff from from jason ward over at making star wars that some production some people working on the production had showed him some pictures from the mandalorian and he actually saw some some various stages of completeness puppets like six pu- uh, puppets of yoda species mcclunkies wow um, so obviously there's going to be more McClunkiness in this series than just this one yeah. baby McClunky. Yeah. Um, because, and, and that's so important because we don't know anything about them. <laughs> we don't even have a name. We're having to make up a name for them, uh, based off of a current Star Wars meme to, <laughs> to re- reference them at all. Like we have no background. A current Star Wars meme as of today. <laughs> yeah. This is hot off the presses. Um, you know, something else that just occurred to me is, th- so obviously this is post-fall of the Empire. Why? There's no Emperor pulling the strings, as far as we know. Yeah. As far as we know, this isn't part of some, uh, part of, you Operation know, Operation Cinder, Cinder or anything. anything like that, right? So we know of. So, yeah, so, yeah, so why is this, this... Why is this doctor interested in these guys? And allied with this warlord, this Im- ex-Imperial or current right. Imperial warlord whatever he is. Yeah. It's really, really interesting. I really want to know. Not at all a direction that I thought this show would be going in. Right. But a really, I I love how it ties it back to everything else, but in a way that's kind of, in a way that doesn't matter to everything else. 
Well, in the way that everything else doesn't matter to this. Y- yes, right. That's the other direction. Yeah. Right, right. That it's yeah, it's not beholden to draw the connect these dots, these hard lines right. to the original trilogy or anything like that. It'll be interesting to see if it does have it any can be force. Its own thing. If it does have any force relation, yeah. just because of the only two we've ever known have been powerful force users that were on the Jedi Council. Right. So it could just be something inherent to their species. Right. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes and why you would want this baby that's already locked up in a tiny, you know, floaty cradle thing. Yeah. De- you know, why would you want him? Why would you want it? We don't know if it's he or she, I guess. Why would you want it dead? And you know what? And then delivered. Something else, too, is so Nick Nolte's character, um, the Ugnot, I forget his name. I don't know if he ever said his did He, he said his name at one point, didn't he? Uh, yeah. Give me a second. I didn't write it down, but that Ugnot was talking about how many people have come seeking this, this thing, this target. Right. And that there can't be peace until, what was he saying? Until it's taken or until everyone stops coming. Right. Something like, something along those lines. character was, uh, cool. K U I L L, okay. Cule. I don't remember what how he pronounced it. In the yeah. Show so now. yeah, he referenced that basically others have tried. Yeah, and um, failed. And fa- there were there were a ton of guys there. They're all Nikto, which I thought was interesting. It was all the same group. And, and IG Eleven was already there for the same bounty, which is interesting because the Mandalorian and both IG Eleven say that they didn't know anyone else was on this job. So was someone else. Because we don't know that it's the same exact job from the same client. It, it could be the client sent out multiple. It's possible. Basically, hunters. just send out multiple and see who brings it back. It's possible. Multiple contracts. Or are there multiple people trying to get this thing for whatever reason? Is it really just that it's a high value target? Be- well, because but, these species are so rare, the McClunkies are so rare. But yeah, why? Well, that's a whole other question. I don't know. I don't know why it's rare, but do you think that's why? Or is it because of this specific one is is interesting for some reason? Yeah. I don't know. The the thing, like I I keep going back to, the thing that bothers me the most is there's this doctor guy that's interested in it. Yeah. Like he's very, he he looks very doctory. He's like, he looks like, experimental surgeon type person right like he's <laughs> yeah, doing something bit. weird a little like bit. he's doing something weird with these guys <laughs> there's something weird going on he's making some kind of amalgamation monster and he needs these for are you whatever. making a frankenstein <laughs> it's just one of them frankensteins <laughs> uh so that's what bothers me the most is just you've got like weird you know dr hyde Making, yeah, trying, right. going after baby creatures that he wants dead. Like, that's the part that bothers me. It's Dr. Jekyll, by the way. No, I'm sorry. Mr. Hyde. He, he, maybe, no, he's Dr. Hyde. He's, he's gone. <laughs> oh, he's, he's, he went he's crazy. <laughs> he got his degree. He's good. Um, he changed and then became a doctor. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very difficult to stay focused <laughs> and not kill everyone. <laughs> So that's what bothers me the most is that... Mr. Hyde is <laughs> Dr. Jekyll. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah if it was just the imperial guy wanting this thing it probably wouldn't bother me as much yeah but the fact that there's this doctor guy like feeding this imperial guy information it raises so many more questions than if just the imperial guy was like i want this baby dead and you're like all right <laughs> you're just a weird dude you're a bad guy you're not Doing anything weird with them, you just want it dead. It's got to be some kind of alliance because they paid, the client paid in Imperial branded Beskar steel. Right. So, right, yeah, yeah. So it's got to be something to his benefit. They're work- yeah, right. Exactly. They're working together <clears throat> for some reason. Right. But there's just something weird going on. Yeah. Because there's a doctor, it has to be something weird. <laughs> They grind up their ears for sex juice. <laughs> sex I don't know. Juice. It makes me think of a uh, uh, Futurama. You do weird sex things with this, with this McClunky. <laughs> it makes me think of Futurama where they grind up humans' noses for uh, for sex powder. 
aphrodisiac. Yeah, the human nose is an aph- the human horn is an aphrodisiac <laughs> for uh, the the big fat alien yeah, species. Yeah, for, for Lur and yeah, all them. Yeah, I forget what they were called. Um, there's got to be something. There's there's something so, weird happening as yes. to why they want these things. It's not just some sort of. I don't know, high value target for the sake of the target being high value. There's something, so, yeah. So there's for a me, reason for it being a high target. So for me that this a, a story is really interesting. I really like where it's going, but I hope this whole, and it sounds like it's going to, uh, but the, this whole, uh, uh, Mandalorian tribe on this underground tribe. Right. Um, story too. Yeah. So he, he brings the bar of Besker steel to the armorer. And they have this conversation. She says, it looks like th- this was gathered during the Great Purge. So right. after the Empire uh, took over Mandalore, like you're saying, assumingly uh, because of the steel. They were after yeah. the, the Beskar steel. Um, she asks him, uh, has your signet been revealed yet? Yeah, which is... And he says, not yet. Revealed. Which is really interesting. Is yeah, it something that's given to you or something that... You is it something that you earn? Yeah, yeah, through through conquest, through, you know. Is there a council? Like, is there, like, right. a leadership? Right. I'm guessing? I don't know. That was, that was really interesting to me. And then um, she was saying how the excess Beskar that was melted. Well, first of all, she says, uh, I think a pauldron is in order. And she takes right. a Beskar steel and melts it down and makes a pauldron for him. Yeah. And replaces, replaces his shore trooper pauldron. Which is super cool that he just, you know, it's yeah. just a, a piece of shore trooper armor as his pauldron. So I assume that this is going to happen over the course of the series. He's going to get more and more Beskar and be able to build yeah, up his I mean, armor. Yeah, we've seen some screenshots of that too, where his armor basically improves over time, which yeah. I'm guessing... I wonder how he gets more Beskar, because if he's not killing this thing, I don't think he's going back to the client anytime soon for more Beskar. I think he would go back at least once. Without the... the and the, ask. Without the query? Ask what the deal is. Are you doing Maybe. weird sex things with this? <laughs> what do you want this thing for? You doing sex things? <laughs> you got weird weird sex stuff in the back? <laughs> um, but yeah, so they she makes him the pauldron, and she talks about how the excess will sponsor, sponsor many young foundlings. Um, and then... The Mandalorian responds with, I was, a, that's good. I was a foundling once. And then starts having these flashbacks of right. his parents, assume, I assume his parents, abandoning him. Well, like hiding him while the, this purge is, or, the, you know, this. Or, yeah, right, hiding happening. him as, as this attack is happening. And, you know, people are getting shot up and they hide him. Um, and I guess that's how he became orphaned. Um, but yeah, it's it's interesting that this will sponsor more foundlings. So that's where it's like, yeah, is foundling a Mandalorian term of like finding Mandalorians that don't have a clan anymore? Um, maybe where they're not. Yeah, they don't have they don't have a clan to fall under. They don't have because Mandalorian armor in and of itself is usually something that's passed down too. Like even true, even like Sabine's armor. I think is like 500 years old or something. Yeah. It's um, where really it's, old. It's, it's passed down. So if you're a foundling, you don't have a clan, you don't have a family that has armor that's been passed down. Yeah. They're, you know, able, I guess, to sponsor, to provide these foundlings something. And I'm guessing right. that that's where it may be that the foundling is a term they use for, you know, finding orphaned lost Mandalorian children. Yeah. But the fact, but the, um, but the the foundry person, I don't know what I don't think she has a name. The armorer is the just, armorer is just what she's called. She looks like she's a, a Zabrak, which yeah, the way her helmet was sculpted with the horns. Which Mandalorians aren't usually Zabraks. They're usually True. very much, you know. Maybe it was just referencing uh, the the Zabrak uh, uh, anatomy. You know, it could be. Not... It could just be a a design choice. But yeah. I mean, I'm assuming a a a Zabrak could be raised on Mandalore. Like that's not the question. But usually, armor wearing Mandalorians are of a are Mandalorian humans. clan that is full blooded Mandalorian. Yeah, like they are a family and a clan that is from Mandalore. Right. Um. It is a. It's definitely a family. A and you know a thing that you you uh, inherit. Yeah. Um, so the fact that there is possibly a Zabrak Mandalorian in armor is an interesting idea. Yeah, I wonder if that was a design choice or if it was a uh, 
uh, the actual reflection of their race. Right. I don't know. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so the whole thing with with getting Beskar and him improving his armor is that'll be really interesting as yeah. that goes on, yeah. Earn, earning more pieces right. to his full his, his full kit. I love I love the articulation of IG Eleven, how he moves and and shoots. So and stuff. Di- so disturbing. Yeah, it's really disturbing. It's very uh, it's surprisingly quick, but also very it's slow and clunky. It's so same janky. Time. Yeah. <laughs> It reminds it, really it reminds me of it, to go back to Futurama. It reminds me of Bender's weird like flompy legs when he's walking, <laughs> like because he has those like joints on his knees yeah. that are tubes. He yeah. like has these weird like flompy legs that he's just like stomping forward yeah. while the while his it's like a tank track basically where he just starts walking in the direction he wants to go while his upper body does whatever else it needs <laughs> right. to do. <laughs> right. He's just like, all right, just set direction forward and then just yeah. goes nuts while he continues to move. And oh, it's yeah. so disturbing because it's just this weird whirling dervish of, yeah. of death. <laughs> exactly. And I love the droid logic of Oh, I'm trapped. Time to self-destruct. Yeah. He just has <laughs> he just has a thermal detonator in his chest at all times. Just to destroy himself, whatever. So that's really where you should be aiming on those things. <laughs> yeah, I guess just right so. in the chest. Inside that little compartment right. in his chest. Yeah. Jeez. But yeah, he's just like, oh, stop time to initiate uh, you know, instantly gives up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty great. And he keeps trying. He keeps like every time it gets worse. He's like, oh, time to do it again, basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, they, and it was. I'm assuming, IG Eleven comes back, right? Like that can't be shot in the head. That can't be the end. His character only lasts for one episode. That's so sad. That is sad. He was shot in the head. That doesn't mean his, his whole, you know, memory and board and everything are destroyed. Maybe I don't know. They said um, it'd be funny if he shows up again. What would what, they say? The, the that blaster shot hit him, and it, he said it missed his central processing something. I, I can't remember what he said. Central now. circuit cluster or Co- something like that. Something, or core yeah, cluster, something. it missed whatever his yeah. core connections were, uh, and that hit him in the chest. Yeah. So, so the Mandalorian just shot him right in the face. If his if his junk isn't up there, then. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so he may be I, fine. I, I hope he comes back because that's such that's a good that's a great character. It'd be I would funny hate if to, he, I would hate to lose him so soon. It'd be funny if he does come back and just has that hole in his head for the rest of yeah, he's just the series destroyed, <laughs> or he comes back and just doesn't remember him. <laughs> this happens multiple he times. Shot that one like over the series, this happens a lot. Like he keeps killing him, but he never remembers. <laughs> <laughs> and they always team up, and at the end, he always shoots them. <laughs> it's just their thing. That would be pretty funny. <laughs> I hope he comes back because that, that is a great character. Yeah, we'll see, and I guess. How just disturbing it is to watch him. I, yeah. want, I want to see more of that happening. Yeah. But yeah, I, yeah, the show was the show was so good. Yeah, I'm really yeah, I'm really excited to see. It's exciting that we get another episode go. in like three days or whatever. What is it? Tuesday? Yeah. Yeah, three days. Mm-hmm. On um, Friday. Yeah. And I think the episodes, they finally did announce the episodes are supposed to drop in the evening and not just, like, in the morning like this one. Oh, did. really? Yeah. I believe it was, uh, nice. like, 6 p.m. or something. I'll look it up real quick. Nice. Uh, yeah, I, I, I really like the, like I said, the direction of the A story, where that's going with this McClunky. And I, I really want to know more about this, this Mandalorian tribe. Whether it's one tribe... Um, or if it's just a collection of, of whatever Mandalorians are left that's on this one planet, you know, is it, is it localized? Are there more of these groups around? Is it this one planet that has it? I don't know. I, I really want to know more about that. That's, that's a, it's a cool idea. Yeah, it really is. Um, yeah, I, Definitely not a race or character or thing that I thought would be brought up in this by any means. <laughs> the McClunky? Yeah, very surprising. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see where that where that gets taken. It'll be interesting to see if, yeah, I mean, just using this as a vehicle to give us information about that, too, is, is an interesting choice. Yeah. So, overall, 
C plus. <laughs> oh, just kidding. C plus. <laughs> Everything about it was fantastic. It was really good. It was really good. I yeah, I don't think there was one part that I was disappointed about. No. You know? No, the music was great. The the visuals were great. The the visuals are, were incredible. The the use of practical and visual and non practical like non practical effects. The uh, was so good. The Ugnaught, his face, yeah, was all practical. It's it looks great. Yeah, that was. I mean, the surprisingly the, good looking. The blurgs were uh, CGI, obviously, but right. Um, I'm trying to think. Were the were the land the land speeders were practical too, right? When they were the first up? one that pulled by with the droid in it wasn't. Okay. Uh, but the the but next Brian one, Pusain's the one was. with Brian Posehn, was definitely, yeah, um, definitely practical. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I'm sad. It's only ten episodes. The future episodes are going to be forty five minutes, right? Or are they going to be? Because this one was only around it was, thirty nine or forty. It was like thirty nine, forty minutes. Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, the run times were, I think were different per episode. They, there was a oh. list of the run times. I think there were some that were up into the fifties. Wow. Uh, so it just depends, but yeah, only 10 episodes, but it'll still be, that'll take us into the end of December or beginning of January. 10 episodes, right? Every week. Yeah. 10 weeks. Yeah. It's, uh, rise of Skywalker is what? like eight Jeez. weeks away yeah it's not that far right it's not so this will take us a little bit into the a little bit into january um like less than eight weeks it's like yeah geez, don't six or seven weeks i think it's right too much i can't take it <laughs> it's yeah, close I, it's really close but yeah i'm i'm excited to get weekly episodes it's kind of sucked it, it, it's that thing we talked about before where it's like it, i'm glad i can't binge it and then forget about it. Like I have to sit with that knowledge for a week yeah. or at least for this episode for three days. Yeah. But I have to sit with that knowledge and think about it and feel about it. And I can't just be like 24 episodes in three days and be like, <laughs> I don't remember anything that happened. It was good. Anyways, what am I watching now? Which is how most things are. I mean, we, sure. we talked about this before, but yeah. it's, it's that whole, you right. actually have to sit with the information yeah. and process it. And have feelings. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah. I know most people don't want to have feelings <laughs> about things and just want to, you know, just, just vacuum up content. But I, don't, for, I appreciate that for Star Wars. Yeah. I appreciate the forced um, reflection <laughs> of what's happening. Because I wouldn't be able to stop myself and pace myself. I would just suck it all down and then at the end... Well, as like, soon as you see McClunky, you're like, all right, I got to know more about this. Right. And then you put but on you the wouldn't, next episode. You wouldn't get to sit and be like, oh, what is it? what could it mean? What could... You know, it's that whole... Yeah. We talked about this on a prior episode, right? We're like, you know, back when you're watching Breaking Bad or Lost, it's like you have that time in between to be like, shit, what's going to happen next? Well, yeah. this could happen and that could happen. And it's the enjoyment you get out of actually liking something. Right. Instead of liking something... And then moving on because you don't have time to actually enjoy it, <laughs> which is just my grandpa. Now, there's nothing preventing us from having self control when it when it when things are bingeable. And yeah, you could just... I'm the I'm in the way of that. <laughs> Definitely, there's no self. Take this power away from me. <laughs> Someone stop me. The responsibility <laughs> is too much. So the burden. I think we've probably said enough about the Mandalorian. But uh, there's nothing more to say, I don't think. No. For, so, for reference of anyone that hasn't kept track of what the term McClunky is about, because I feel we have to give some explanation <laughs> instead of just using this stupid word. When Disney Plus launched today, it had all of the Star Wars films except for The Last Jedi. That won't be out until on there until December something due to. It's not on there because it was bad. <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. <laughs> Bob knew. They do the contract things and stuff. They can't have it until like December. I think it was December something. Um, Bob Newhart. Yes, Bob Newhart. He's in charge of Disney Plus. <laughs> but they all of the Star Wars films except for the Last Jedi are on there. Surprisingly, all in 4K, ultra high def HDR10, which I didn't expect. I don't think they announced that they were going to be in 4K. The originals because those had just yeah they they I think they said they were going to be in 4K but not. I mean, I don't know. 
Uh, anyways, so people started watching them, as, as you do, and found that A New Hope had been edited again by George <laughs> Lucas. Yeah. The Han Greedo, Han shot first, Greedo shot first scene has been edited once more, and this is the first time we're actually getting to see it. It was edited actually a long time ago. Um, back when they were going to be re-releasing all the movies in 3D in theaters, yeah, he edited New Hope again, but that never got released. Right, because of the whole Disney purchase. Because of the whole Disney purchase, yeah. which stopped, because only like one movie got released in theaters Phantom in Menace, 3D, right? Phantom Menace did, nothing else did. Right. And so this edit has been sitting there as the official final edit for a long time now, <laughs> and no one knew it until now. And so now Han and Greedo... Both shoot at the same time. Well, yeah. So Han says, "I'll bet you have talking to Legrito." Talking yeah, about they're they're talking shit at each other. Like Han they says, "I'll did. bet you have," and they've got their guns pointed at each other. And then it cuts to Greedo <laughs> right when you think you know normally they shoot at each other. It cuts to Greedo and he says, "McClunky." <laughs> yeah, he says, "McClunky," and then they both shoot at the same time at each other. Yeah. So like they were both whatever that means. Like it's just like fuck you, and then they both shoot. <laughs> McClunky. <laughs> so Star Wars has a new word, McClunky. <laughs> We don't know why or what it is. <laughs> but go go watch that something, scene. It's, something in Huddies, I'm guessing. The editing is really awkward, too, because it's like, as soon as, like, Han's line, it's so natural for that to be the last line, just the way he says it and everything. But for them to, like, f- for, like, oh, this no. shot with Greedo to be forced in to say <laughs> something back, it just does not feel right at all. McClunky! And then yeah. Yeah, shooting at him. It feels really weird. So, yeah, the, the current Star Wars meme is the term mcclunky um which god knows what that means in hut in, in hutties but it's it wasn't subtitled it wasn't subtitled subtitles so, for everything else greedo says except that except for mcclunky yeah it's not even there's not even the because if you have you know there's obviously the the hard-coded subtitles of you know of i didn't even translating yeah but the actual subtitles, like if you turn on English subtitles, which usually say like speaking alien, yeah. there's nothing for there either. Right. Um, so McClunky has no meaning other than <laughs> McClunky means something to all of us in our own way. <laughs> we are all McClunky. Oh, no. it, I, I didn't notice or I didn't I didn't think to pay attention to this when I was watching it earlier. But is the is Greedo's mask recreated or is it was it like a cut scene? Where? When it cuts to him? When it cuts to him and he says that word, is it a recreation of what Greedo, like, is it a CG I don't creation? think it's a puppet. I think it is a... So do you think it's a cut scene that got cut originally? I wonder. I don't know. I don't know. I can't, I couldn't, at least nothing jumped out at me. So it's George's last screw you for the Han and Greedo shot first thing. Now they both know. shoot at the same time. And they both speak. Nobody has a Greedo has the last word now. That's true. That's McClunky. <laughs> McClunky. I want a shirt that just says McClunky. McClunky. On it. Oh, I'm sure there's gonna be. I'm, there's gotta I'm be one sure there's soon. gonna be tons. If there's of not shirts. one already, that's such an iconic thing now. <laughs> just a shirt that says McClunky. <laughs> I want it. Oh man. So yeah, that's why we were calling the babies McClunky because McClunky is now the, everything. <laughs> it's everything. It's you, it's me, it's Yoda. Anything we don't know in Star Wars <laughs> everything now. Everything we a don't McClunky. know is a McClunky. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Do we want to talk about this other stuff yes. or do we want to just leave it to be this is a Mandalorian episode? No. I don't know cuz there's a lot we could talk about here with this stuff. I'll say a couple things. Couple things. So in reference to Disney Plus and, and all of that, on a recent uh, call um, with, uh, you know, talking about on recent financial earnings, call, earnings, earnings call, call or something, Bob Iger was talking about the Star Wars movies and once again acknowledged the, the hiatus of films for a few years. Quote, unquote. Um, but he also mentioned that um, in addition to the three series that have been announced, Lucasfilm has more Star Wars shows already in development for Disney Plus. Um, so, you know, we know about the Cassian series, we know about the Obi-Wan series, and obviously we have the Mandalorian. Uh, he did confirm on that call that there are more Star Wars shows in development, which is, yeah. I mean, obviously he doesn't say live action or animated. Because well, I, Kenobi we, is the one we know of. Kenobi, Mandalorian, and Cassian are the three oh, we know of. So, I, I, assume, I assume we're going to get a animated Disney Plus series that's not 
uh, you know, Resistance, which is already out. Um, I assume we're getting probably some animated stuff because that's a, that'll be a little quicker to get onto the system. Um, but I, I, I would be very excited if there's even more live action stuff coming than these three. That'd be really cool. So it's nice to have confirmation that it's not just a, you know, pump out what these, these ideas they've had. They are actively trying to come up with more Star Wars content for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, I mean, it does sound like the trend is going to be um, just TV shows from here on out um, on Disney Plus until they figure out this whole I mean, next they have, they, I mean, they have, thing. They, it, I mean, at least it, it released with some new movies, like the uh, Lady and the Tramp movie are on there. I just meant for Star Wars. For Star Wars, it's it's very possible. Yeah, we really Until they figured this next saga out, what the next what the next anything is movie release is going to be. I I don't know. Would, would you see movies being released on Disney plus? I don't, I don't really see mm. that happening. No, not for such a big, not for such a big thing. Franchise. Yeah. That would be tough. Yeah. Like they can make their stuff like lady and the tramp movie that came out. Right. Sure. Or Disney channel original type movies like the Christmas movie they put up there. Noel. Yeah, put all these like CG remake movies on there. You, you know? can put stuff like that on there, but it'd be really I think it'd be really hard to have a Star Wars movie unless there's a Mandalorian movie or something that's based off of a thing that was already a Disney Plus thing. Yeah. Maybe. Uh that that makes it tough. Maybe. And I mean, I, I we kind of have to touch on it. The reason this is relevant is we since last time we released an episode cuz it's been a little while, uh Ben Off and, and Weiss have been let they they left disney <laughs> well yeah they have been there's let the go official and or, story and then know. there's the behind the scenes story <laughs> so we already knew that they were making a deal with some with netflix, with netflix to do whatever i guess netflix wants well f- so first off they were hired to do or it was announced that they were going to do a star wars trilogy the deal with netflix came after that right it was announced after that i don't know the timing exactly but um, the official story was that they they surrendered. So they their they, responsibilities they signed a two hundred million dollar multi year deal with Netflix to produce exclusive content. Same After thing that happened with JJ recently, what was it? W, WB or WB something? or something? Which why would you go with WB? It's very strange. But anyway, so they it wasn't si- Sony, was it? I don't no, think it was, so. I think it was WB. WB. So they signed this $200 million multi-year deal to produce content for Netflix after yeah. already committing to working on Star Wars. Yeah. After doing so, officially, they decided that they don't have enough time to work on Star Wars yep. and tendered their resignation from what they were working on. That was the official That's the story. official wording. Of course, the internet runs away with that and we're like, Kathy fired somebody else again, <laughs> um, which is... Is possible. I mean, if I'm Disney and I'm like, okay, the guys that I'm trusting to release the next Star Wars film because their film was announced to be the next thing in 2022. Yeah. They just signed a $200 million deal to make multiple things for Netflix. Yeah. During that same time, they're supposed to be making one thing for us. We've already been struggling with creators not making things for us the way they need to be making things for us <laughs> or, 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 or not giving star Wars the, the love and attention it needs. Yeah. Cause I do feel like Chris and you know, with, with the whole solo thing, it sounded like there definitely was some creative, like you're not treating star Wars like star Wars should be treated. Well, yes. Okay. So there's two angles to this then. So there's this angle where it's, there's a concern that they won't be focused or, right. or, or, yeah, like you're saying, giving Star Wars the love it needs. There's also the angle of the timing of this announcement because after they got their Netflix deal, the whole uh, Game of Thrones yeah, debacle was, about like them canceling that they appearance had, they, last they minute. They were at, um, and uh, it wasn't South by Southwest, it was something in, was it South by Southwest? There was some panel, was something, that they some were panel on. they had know. where they basically admitted to the fact they had no idea they were what, no idea what they were doing with Game of Thrones. In the entire show, the entire time, they basically just did stuff because they wanted to do stuff. Where they were just trying things. Basically. They were just trying things, and then other people they would give them that- the actual Game of Thrones information. Like they admitted they knew nothing about Game of Thrones, right? And were just making a thing, right? So all of that they talked about all of that. 
after and the then, Netflix deal. Very soon after that, this was announced yeah. that they volunteered to leave, you know, that they resigned from Star Wars. So the whole behind the scenes yeah. kind of rumor is that there there's been a concern for a very long time about their their focus, their ability right. to helm something as big as Star Wars. Which is interesting because at least from an internet standpoint, right? The internet loves to blow up at Kathleen Kennedy because she's a woman and she shouldn't be in charge of anything ever unless it's a kitchen. That's the internet. That's the internet's, the internet's opinion, not mine. I love Kathleen Kennedy and she has she been is the, producer. the perfect person for the show. She job. has produced so much good content other right. than Star Wars. Like she has the track record, right? Right. But it's so interesting with this. When they were first announced, everyone was like, yeah, they're doing a Star Wars. Yeah. And then this interview thing came out where they admitted yeah. that they didn't know anything. Then everyone was like, yeah, they're not doing a Like, the internet just all Completely agreed. Completely turned. Yeah, yeah, they just all agreed. Like, yeah, that makes sense. We don't want them doing Star Wars because they're a bunch of assholes. Like, well, just make up your mind. <laughs> there was just a general agreement that we're like, yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Even, like, even with, with Colin... Uh, Trevorrow being let go yeah. from Star Wars, there was a stink, even though he makes shitty movies. <laughs> like, that was right after Book of Henry, which is supposedly one of the worst films of all time, which we still haven't watched and we need to. Yeah, we do need to watch that. You know, people were like, what? You're just letting people go doing things. And he just released, like, one of the shittiest movies of all time. And other <laughs> really? Makes, and makes other Fallen shitty- Kingdom you're talking about? No, Book of Henry was supposed to be one of the shittiest oh, movies okay. of all time. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. But he's, his other movies have not been good. Like, Fallen Kingdom wasn't good. Well, yeah, I don't know. It was, um, it was all right. So, you know, whereas these guys, everyone's like, yeah, okay, that's fine. That makes sense. Do that. And I'm glad that there wasn't a big blow up specifically about them. There was some, but far less than there ever has been of letting go yeah. creators from Star Wars. And we had speculated in the past about them doing something fantasy-ish with Star Wars, like going back to old But if Republic they have no idea what they're doing about anything anyways, I don't want them touching it. Right. So... That's good. Yeah. It, but it's interesting. Now, their movie was supposed to be the next thing. Uh, now what? Well, yeah. So now we've got this Ryan Johnson trilogy that's kind of hanging out in the ether. That Which has he's, been he's on and off said they're still talking to. about. Well, yeah. So he's saying, I, I am still on board. I'd love to do it. You know, uh, nothing beyond mm -hmm. he's willing and ready to do it. So now there's pretty hard Nothing rumors. Nothing on Lucasfilm's side other than that right. initial announcement that, that he was going to do it. There's unofficial, you know, there's these rumors. Nothing, you know, just take everything with a grain of salt. But there's these pretty heavy rumors that Lucasfilm has canned all planned films, including Ryan Johnson's, to basically regroup and reset and try to figure out, okay, what are we doing next? We can't just keep hopping from thing to right. thing. Right, and then this what whole, is the plan? This whole creative director thing with Kevin Feige. Feige? Feige. Um, coming in. He's still doing his thing, supposedly. Well, yeah. I mean, there's rumors are swirling all around that, too, that that's mixed into this, that he's going to replace Kathleen well, or that him coming in. Which that in, can't happen because he was just given a new title at Marvel to be a, the head of all creative things at well, Marvel. Well, yeah, I know that. You and I right, know that. I'm right. just saying that that's we, part We of understand the, how the world works. Right? That's part of this rumor swirl. Is that, right. yeah, he's like either replace Kathleen or he's coming in and making these but decisions and canceling sense. Ryan's trilogy. And and all this crazy stuff. I can't remember if we talked about it last time, but it makes sense for him. He has he ran this very successful string of films that had an overarching theme and sure. IP. Yeah, he ran a very successful, you know, multi you know decade of of films. Yeah, mm -hmm. all in Marvel, all in the same universe, all having a little bit of you know story in each other that all kind of built on the same thing until it built to this giant head of the um end game end game yeah so it kind of makes sense to bring him into star wars especially if he is a fan of star wars and i feel he did a really good deal you know job with the marvel films for the most part yeah to come in and be like okay we've got this ip we had they we already had something to work off of because of george and the trilogy yeah we're closing that we don't know what to do next mm -hmm. and we don't want to keep hopping from project to project of this creator's thing and this creator's thing. How can we successfully build what you did with Marvel? But yeah, well, with the, Star the Wars? next saga, right? Because that's not something Star Wars has had. We've not had to. It's can, always been the we've Skywalker. We've always built on the same thing and that thing is about to be done. Yeah. So how do we start a thing and build a thing? Because even, even for even, you know, 
I love Kathleen Kennedy, but that's also not her wheelhouse either. Like she doesn't build on one thing. She's been a fantastic producer for many fantastic films, yeah. but not like one huge IP that just has this continuing on forever like Marvel does. Yeah. So bringing in someone that knows that side and has that mind for the story and for building it like that, it makes sense to bring him in and maybe to help start producing some stuff to get it started. Maybe. Yeah. I, I don't I, think Kathleen's getting replaced by any means. Yeah. But I think bringing him in to try to, and, and it, bringing him in was fairly recent too with the whole Netflix deal. They maybe could have seen the writing on the wall to be like, okay, we need to, we can't just do like, oh, let's do this thing these guys want to mm-hmm. do. Hey, let's do this thing these guys want to do. And then Star Wars is all over the place and it's not, it's not, Star Wars as a whole, it's Star yeah. Wars, his Star Wars and their Star Wars and this Star Wars. Yeah, and then we're back to the the mess that we had in the EU with the books, where everyone has their own Star Wars that makes sense in its timeline. Right, that may or not have been cleared with um, each other. <laughs> so, as much as I don't want to lose Ryan Johnson's trilogy, and we may not, it makes yeah, sense. For the, it makes sense for them to step lines, back and be yeah. like, okay, we can't just do a thing that they want to do because it sounds cool, and do a thing they want to do because yeah. it sounds cool. We need to have a reason to do what we're doing and for it all to be unified. And I think it's reasonable to assume that it's going to be at least postponed because of what Iger is saying about the movies. I doubt we're going to get a movie in 2022 now. There's no way. If their thing was supposed to be the next thing, unless unless it was far enough in development for someone else to pick it up, I don't see that happening. I also don't see that happening because of the production troubles they've had with other projects like Solo, where multiple people have come in and out. Very possibly. So I yeah I don't so that story idea may ex- may still exist and eventually come back maybe if it's still in the story phase though I yeah I think you're right about 2022 I I don't think anything there's not enough time because they would need to start unless it's a really know, solid maybe. idea I you know given their the Game beginning. of Thrones given their Game of Thrones panel it probably wasn't a solid <laughs> idea it's like we want to make know. a thing that looks cool and has has a guy I don't know <laughs> <laughs> all right good I job. Don't know. I don't know. Oh, yeah, he's got a laser sword because it's Star Wars. <laughs> they have those, right? I think. Yeah, so we'll see. It, yeah, who knows, where it's, who knows where it's going. But the fact that Bob was... The fact on a recent call, Bob was reiterating that there's going to be a hiatus, but we're also already working on more shows. Yeah. It sounds like they're probably going to be filling that time with Disney Plus stuff. Yeah. And not necessarily a film in 2020, and that hiatus may extend a little further. Or yeah. 2022. And that hiatus may extend further than originally planned. Maybe. Which, you know, if you give us more stuff like The Mandalorian's first episode was, by all means. Yeah. Keep making I mean, stuff like, like that. we've said a couple times now, they're already producing season two of right. The Mandalorian. So that's definitely going to continue. And everything doesn't have to be a saga. I like this Mandalorian. Like I, I love just more information about the world and the universe. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a Skywalker or right. somebody's mother <laughs> or a clone. Just, just give us Star Wars West Wing and we'll be happy. <laughs> cheers. Damn it. Star Wars cheers. One day. <laughs> One day I'll get it. One day we'll have it. All right. Oh man, this is good. Uh, this this, this that, the episode good. was good, or Star Wars is good. <laughs> Star Wars is take your pick. <laughs> Star Wars cannot be bad unless it's rebels. <laughs> Wait till the Clone Wars season seven comes out. Oh no! <laughs> it just undo everything. <laughs> yeah, more Mandalorian to come, and I can't wait. So more um, resistance to come too. Yes, that has been good this season. I I got a few episodes. I'm a, a episode or two behind, but I like I mentioned before. I love where it's going, given giving that inside look to the first order and the yeah someone that wasn't mind you know it wasn't processed into it, uh, seeing and realizing the difference of them oh, compared to other. The most important things. thing of the show. I'm reading Resistance Reborn. You Which read is really good. You read how much? I got to chapter four. That's where you'll stop. <laughs> well, excuse me. <laughs> is that a threat? No, it's just, it's just I'm just making a bet here. You'll never touch it again. That is not true. 
It is very. I started That's reading it as happen. well. It is really good. It's really good, and it does. It definitely seems to be so far required reading, at least for me. Yeah, it is required reading to fill in. I would absolutely to fill agree. in the story before you see rise. Honestly, of I would rise say skip Thrawn Treason, or or if you have the choice between this and Thrawn Treason, go with this book. Yeah, and this, read th- Resistance. Reborn it definitely. First. To me, it is required reading before you see Rise of Skywalker. Absolutely. It definitely fills yeah. in some story stuff and some character stuff. Yeah. That I think is just for for me, it's always uh, like like it's like when I read the Phasma novel um going into Last Jedi. Going into Last Jedi. Yeah, absolutely. Like it was just knowing more about that character and seeing that character. Not that she was I, in I, I, Last I had, Jedi a lot. But. No, but just I had more of a of a, of a understanding of that character yeah like i feel like this is definitely filling in a lot more stuff with poe and um, yeah there are there especially are... if we get if we get um some of these characters that that are being brought mm. back in this book like we could have i don't know what happens hopefully people don't die at the end of this book because i haven't read the whole thing and i haven't looked up spoilers like hopefully Nora wexley isn't dead or yeah. or anything like that right or wedge god forbid they kill wedge in a book yeah, but if you bring Wedge back and you like you get some of the backstory to that, yeah. um, you get more stuff with 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 Snap or Tim and uh Wexley too. Yeah. And you get stuff with Leia and mm-hmm. Ray and it just builds on the characters before being thrown back into the story. Yeah. So I, I definitely would suggest reading it before yeah, the it's really comes good. out. But given our track record of speed of reading, we've got a a month to finish a whole book. And we can we can barely do that usually. We got it. We can do this. <laughs> sure. Okay. <laughs> I will hold you to it. Okay. We'll see. All right. Well, that's been more than enough for episode 105. If you really enjoy the show, please hit us up on Twitter at Hokey Podcast. You can email us at asklobot at hokeyreligion.com. You can find us on Facebook and YouTube and all the other places that sounds are made. If you really enjoy the show, you can hit us up on patreon.com slash hokey religion and support the show monetarily. Every little bit counts and it can be as little as $1 a month. Otherwise go watch the Mandalorian over and over. And also the Apple and Apple dumpling gang and uh, whatever else is on Disney plus. Cause there's way too, way too damn much. I spent many hours today just adding things to my watch list yeah, that same. I could spend the rest of my days trying to finish Are we really watching. using our last minutes of the podcast. Apple say, dumpling gang. Go, go, go give Disney more money. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, flight of the navigator. <laughs> Willow. The computer who wore shoes. <laughs> there's so much stuff on there, man. 20, Smart house. To see. <laughs> Alley cats rule. Phil of the future. Yeah, there's oh man. My whole childhood is on that thing. So worth it. I was watching Even Stevens earlier. It's it's all good. It's it's pretty good. I'm a child I'm a child of Disney and this thing is just not helping. <laughs> Alright, there's yeah, and there's all the Star Wars stuff too. You that, that's relevant to the podcast, right? <laughs> Alright. This is episode one oh five for Hokey Religion. This is Tyler. This is Michael. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hokey, Hokey Religion is an ancient war. Magic for a good blast here, two seconds.